Optimum Kinematics Forces module is a new set of features of Optimum Kinematics or simulation tool that allows you to simulate any forces at the contact patches of your car and getting the force reactions on each one of the pickup points of your suspensions. Optimum Kinematics Forces module is a is an add-on on, on the regular version of Optum Kinematics, which means that you need a new license key to activate these features. You do that by going to the File and License panel, uh, where you can not only enter a regular serial key that will enable the software for you, but you can also enter a Forces Module key, and that will enable the Forces feature on Optum Kinematics. The way that you create optimum, uh, suspension in Optum Kinematics is the same way that you did in previous versions. So you have many options of front and rear geometries. You also have um, options for actuations and anti roll bar geometries. You can even select more than one actuation if you have that. For example, uh, if you have two callovers like this uh, suspension here, you can simulate that not only for a motion input but also for a force input and you'll get the force on each one of these coilovers, for example. For this example, I already prepared a front and a rear suspension. You have here a pretty simple setup with a double A arm, a push rod, and a U-bar attached to the rockers. Same thing on the rear. Uh, the only new thing about this section is that you have to define the stiffness values. Uh, the way that the solver uses these values is basically uh, they will dictate how much force goes through each one of these components. So let's say you have a lateral input, for example. Uh, if you have a, a very stiff spring and a soft U-bar, you would expect that uh, the forces on the spring would be a lot higher than the forces on the U-bars, right? Uh, the same thing in the other way. So if you have a very stiff U-bar and a very soft spring, uh, the forces on your U-bar will be higher than the forces on your springs. And that's how the, sol the solver in Optum Kinematics uses this, uh, these inputs. So in this case, I have already defined the pickup point coordinates as well as the stiffness for front and rear suspension so I can create my vehicle setup. And again, in this case, nothing has changed. So you have to do it in the same way that you did in the previous version. You select the front and the rear suspension to create a vehicle setup. And now you have to create the inputs for your simulations. Uh, you can come up with any method, pretty much, to uh, estimate the motion and the forces of your simulation. You can, for example, import data from your car, from, from, from real tests that you did on your car. You can import data from your vehicle dynamic simulations. Uh, but in this case, I prepared a simple uh, spreadsheet that will allow me to uh, kind of estimate, have a a good estimate of the motion and the forces of my car. So this spreadsheet takes as inputs uh, basically uh, some basic dim dimensions of the car and also the mass distribution, some other parameters, and that gives us uh, the motion and the vehicle uh, loads. So let's try to simulate a combined situation. Let's say uh, 0.8 g of lateral acceleration and minus 1 g of longitudinal uh, that would represent probably a, a, a corner entry or some kind of combined uh, situation where you have not only uh, longitudinal acceleration but also lateral acceleration and you can see here that we have all the, the outputs. The outputs are really simple you can see that the formulas are not very uh, difficult to, uh, to come up with. So once we have that we can create our inputs. So the way that we create the motions is the same, like nothing has changed compared to the previous versions. You have heave, roll, pitch, and steering. So in this case, I have minus 5.6 millimeters of heave motion, 0.71 of roll, minus 2.14 of pitch and the steering is 31.28. So this is the motion input. If you're already familiar with Optum Kinematics, 
there's no surprise here, right? The new thing is the force motions, uh, the, fo the force inputs, I'm sorry. So the force inputs work kind of in a similar way as the motion input. The only difference is that you have to define fx, fy, fz, mx, and mz on each one of the corners. So you have a lot more inputs there. Uh, in this case, I'm going to type one by one, but you can also, as I said, import data files from Excel spreadsheets, for example. So uh, since I'm, this is a very simple example, I'm going to just type uh, each input one at a time, starting from the FX, so longitudinal forces. Now the lateral loads. The vertical loads. And you can see here that we have higher loads on our right tires because it's a left-hand corner. And finally, the self-aligning torques. I could define the MX, which is the overturning moment, but I'm just gonna leave them at zero for now. I could include them if I wanted to but I'm going to just leave it them as zero for this example. Now, once I have all these inputs, I can visualize them not only using these charts, but also I can click here on the 3D view and see the forces on each one of the four contact patches. See, so this is front left, front right, rear left and rear right tires. These are the forces. I can also uncheck this checkbox here and I have the uh, total force vector. Oh, I can see that I made a, probably made a mistake there on the FX. So let me try to fix that. So we have a negative force because it's a braking condition. So yeah, these 3D forces, these 3D vectors are very useful to spot any mistakes like this one that I made. Uh, you can see also that the self-aligning torques, although they're very small, they're also included in this visualization here. So you can see the MZ here on each one of the contact patches. So once I have all these inputs defined, I can simulate the car. I can do that by going to the quick one chart, uh, quick one uh, panel and selecting my vehicle setup, the motion and the force input. And we're in the simulation. You can see that it doesn't take very long. I mean, it's a, it's a simple simulation, but you can see that it takes just a few seconds to uh, simulate uh, the entire car. And the outputs are basically the same ones as you had for the kinematic simulation. And also you have now the forces on each one of the pickup points. In this case, I'm plotting here the uh, chassis to lower A-arm, the forces on each one of the three directions. Um, but I have, for example, chassis to rocker. So the force of the chassis on the rack rocker, you can see how they change. And the interesting thing here is that some of them are not linear. You can see here uh, this red line here, which is the FY component of the chassis to rocker. is not, it's not a linear, although all our, all our inputs are linear, this output is nonlinear. And that's because uh, we are simulating for both motion and force inputs, right? So uh, since the position of the suspension is changing, the motion ratios will change and that will also change the force ratios, right? So that's why you can have some kind of nonlinear uh, outputs on your simulation. And you can plot these channels using the regular 2D chart in Optum Kinematics. So in this case, let's plot the upper 
ARM, for example. Um, let's do the, the two forces of the upper A-arm on the chassis. So these are the two forces of the upper A-arm on the front left, suspen left suspension. Um, yeah, I have to check the results here. So you have the two uh, forces here on this chart. Uh, you can also visualize them using the 3D view. And that's something that you already had in the previous version of Optum Kinematics. The only new thing now is that you can see the force vectors, right? So let's try to see the ones that I plotted here in the 2D chart. So upper A arm chassis. So these are the two force vector, the two reactions at these two pickup points on the chassis. And since they are too big, I can scale them down so they fit my screen. You can see that one of them is uh, extending the link and the other one is compressing the link. You can see here that on the uh, 3D visualization, you can see also, for example, the contact patch force and if you click this play button here, you can see not only the vehicle move, moving, so the chassis is moving. And as the chassis moves, the contact patch force increases. And that also changes our pickup point forces. See? I can adjust the speed of the, the simulation replay. But you can see how the force, the input force is increasing and the output forces are also increasing. So this is basically what I had to show in this video. Uh, just give a brief overview of this new feature of Optum Kinematics. If you are interested uh, in this software or any of our, of our other software, please check our website, optimumg.com. Uh, and thanks for watching.